Lord, I receive your strength. Thank God for your mercy. I receive your strength. It's in his presence. As a child of God, you have unlimited access to God's presence. Unlimited access. Come boldly. 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 The reason why people don't come boldly, you know why? Because they are they, they are conscious of their shortcoming. Okay, it's fine. I got it. I got it. The reason why people don't come boldly is because they are conscious of their shortcoming. The more you are conscious of your shortcoming, of your humanity, of your frailty, the less confident you're going to be to come to God's presence. If I'm thinking about what I've done right, what I've done wrong, okay, guess what's going to happen? I will not come to God's presence. If the basis for my coming to God's presence is my works, good or bad, believe me, the devil will make sure he reminds me of all the bad things, and I would not want to come. But it says, come boldly. Why? Because there's mercy there. There's grace there. What you need is there. Come boldly. Don't run. You're not Adam. Your Bible says that you partook of the first Adam. Now it says, partake of the second of the last Adam. Last Adam says, come boldly. It says, don't run. Look, look at first, first John chapter 3. First into the three. Verse nineteen. I'm from verse nineteen. Down to the down to the end. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the twenty-four. First John to the three, verse nineteen. It says, "I hereby we know that we are of the truth, and we are sure our hearts before Him." For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So if I feel condemned, you know, my mind tells me you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do that. It says God is greater than my heart. So I can ignore that condemning. Listen, okay, look at this, okay. Thank you, Lord. Look at this. He didn't say if God condemned you. He didn't say if God condemned you. The heart there is the place of good and evil. The heart is a place of good and evil. Okay? When you use the word heart, there's a place that is your conscience. That word heart there is conscience. It's a place where there's the word conscience, if you know the word is corn science. Co science, con science, C O N science. See, corn is not like a corn man. <laughs> Rather, corn means double. Two. Two. Science, of course, is knowledge. Okay? The place of true knowledge, conscience. What's conscious? Good and evil. Good and evil. So there are times your conscience will say, yeah, you do it right. Because you tell child, you say, no, you're not doing right. Okay? Your conscience is fine. But your conscience is not the best guide. The best guide is God, the Holy Spirit Himself. It's God's word. So God's word says, come boldly. But my conscience is condemning me. You know? I have a need, I want to go to God in prayer, you know, to believe God for something I, I, you know, I want to receive from God. And then my conscience telling me, ah, you're not, you know, you didn't pray today, you didn't fast, or you did stuff like that. Therefore, it, it, the message my conscience is sending me is a negative feedback in that sense. But it tells you what, God is greater than your heart, your conscience. I know all things. It doesn't phase it. He knows our things is still your father. Okay? Then it says that, but if our conscience condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. That's you. When your conscience gives you the thumbs up, you feel, yeah. That's what it's saying there. It's not telling you that, it's not telling you that either way is right or wrong. Because I'm going to raise and say, yes, your conscience, your conscience will tell you, oh, go ahead. Your conscience will tell you, go ahead. That's not what it's saying. It says that whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Or someone say, ha, ah, pastor, didn't you just say it's not about keeping commandments? Now watch this. Don't stop, don't stop there and do those things which are pleasing inside. Look at the next verse. And this is his commandment. 
that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. So that's the commandment we're to believe on. That's the, the Lord's commandment, let me call it that way, is the greatest commandment we're to believe on. So this does not talk about, this is not about whether I've done, I've crossed every T or not every I. It's telling you that walking in love is paramount to your faith walking. Walking in love is paramount to your faith walking. That's what it's talking about here. Whatever I ask of him, I receive because of love. Because of walking in love. That's what it's saying here. Because of love, walking in love. Because of walking in love. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And whereby we know that, we are, that he abides in us by his spirit he has given us. So there's, there's a, you can take it, you can walk it from the bottom up. And it says that Holy Spirit is in you. And because Holy Spirit is in you, he has shed abroad his love in your heart. Romans 5 verse 5. He has shed abroad his love in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when I come to God in prayer, okay, the love of God is guaranteed to my answer prayer. That's what he's saying here. My do's and my don'ts are not guaranteed to my answer prayer. It's the love of God. That's, that's the bottom line of what he's saying here. Verse, 20, 20, 20, uh, verse 23 is the born again person. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. You're born again. And then what, or what, what, is, what is that? What is the key factor that's putting you? His love. Holy Spirit, and it tells in verse 20, 24, Holy Spirit is in you. That's how you will abide in him. And when the Spirit is in you, he has put his love in there. So that love is the key to answer prayer. So when I come into God's presence, I come in knowing that God loves me. I come in knowing that God loves me, God has my best interest at heart. And therefore, I'm confident in God. I'm not confident in myself. Even if my heart is saying, you're not doing the right, you're not doing the right, you're not doing the right. I'm saying, well, I believe God. God is my father. My heart, God is bigger than my heart. Than my conscience. That's what it's talking about. Now look at John chapter 1. The reality. So look at John chapter 1 verse 12. So the key there is the fact that you are a child of God. The key there is that you have believed on his name. And because you have believed on his name, Holy Spirit is in you. And, and that's, that's key. That's John chapter 1, verse 12. God wants you and I to be confident, to rest confidently in this knowledge, in this truth. That we are God's children. That we are the sons of God. He wants you and I to rest confidently. Okay? To rest our anchor deep in that truth. That you are not half and half. You are all wall to wall Holy Ghost. You are God's child through and through. John 1 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power, the word power, you can also say the right, the authority right, to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Do you believe on his name? Yes. Have you received him? Yes. Therefore you are a son of God. Have you believed on him? Yes. Have you received him? Yes. Therefore you are a son of God. You are a son of God. And that, that is the key thing that God wants us to wants us to understand. Once you have believed on him and received him, you are son of God. <coughs> now somebody might say, why doesn't he say daughter of God? Why is it son? Why? Because, let me, let me say this way. In this culture which the Bible was written, okay, sonship means you have authority. Sonship means you have the father's authority. You have the father's authority to speak on the father's behalf. When you say you are a son, that means you speak on the father's behalf. That's what it means. Sonship means you have the authority to speak on the father's behalf. 
You have the right to stand. Like when you open your mouth and speak, it's as though the Father himself is speaking. So when you get born again, okay, you become a son of God. And then the Holy Spirit, and that's a reality in your spirit. The Holy Spirit now begins to work that reality out. That's why you learn the word of God. You begin to, what does it, why we come to church? You know why? So we can begin to think like God. We can begin to think like our Father. And when we think like Him, we we'll begin to behave and talk like Him. It's just like if a man is a billionaire, okay? His children get trained to think like billionaires. They don't get trained just to, just like other children. Mm -hmm. They are trained to think like billionaires. They make sure they have access to things their father has. They begin to learn their father's ways. And that way, when they grow up, they just basically walk into his shoes. I remember, you know, um, sometime listening about uh, Donald Trump and his children. Yes, the big boy and the son. You know, the Van Khan, I forgot the other guy's name now. I think it's Don Jr. I can't remember his name. But they were, uh, Donald Trump did not allow his kids to just, he um, uh, didn't just say, okay, you're my kids, therefore you're not going to be over the empire. No, 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 no. He made them work, work in the, in the, in the empire. They work in the empire on t because they have to think like him. They have to catch his spirit. They have to get his perspective. Okay, and then at the, the due time, he invited them to where they, where they were, or where they are today. Mm -hmm. The same thing with us. God begins to renew our minds. We are sons of God inside, in our spirit. But God begins to renew our minds, so we start thinking like him. We start thinking no lack. We start thinking no impossibility. Anything is possible. If someone tells you that somebody had blind eyes and a blind eye pop open, it doesn't faze you. Like, oh, of course. Because you are thinking like God now. Someone tells you, I went to a doctor, I got a diagnosis, and says, whatever it is, you say, well, let's pray about it. We call up things are possible. You start thinking and talking like God. Okay, that's a reality of sonship. Understand that knowing that I am a son of God. Look at Romans 8. I'm a son of God. I'm not half and half. But, but some, I said, but, but, but pastor, but why do I struggle with this? Why? Because you have this body cloaking something inside. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this skin. We have this, you know, this, this earth suit. Earth suit made from corrupted earth that will be redeemed someday. It's like taking a lion and putting it out in a cage. A lion in a cage is still a lion. <laughs> I went to a zoo one time, when I was in college. I went to a zoo. I got a lion there. A lion was laying down there lazily. I'm like, say, please, I was a lazy lion. So I, took, I was throwing stuff at the lion. Yeah, so lazy. I'm a lazy guy. Just there, just, you know. I was throwing rocks. Next thing, the lion charged. Roared and charged hard at the gate. Roar! Boom! I hit the gate. I ran back so far. <laughs> the lion was saying, he went down in a cage. I'm still alive. Don't try me. I said, if that cage had opened that up in here, I'll be there right now. <laughs> you're going to kill me right there. <laughs> So God wants us to realize that we are, we are his sons. We are his sons. But here's the interesting thing. We can begin to, unlike that line with the cage that cannot come out, we can begin to come out. We can begin to tame this body and renew our minds and tame this body so that the God in us will begin to shine. But for that to happen, we have to be conscious of the God in us, first of all. A lot of times, Christians want to get the results of God on the outside when they have not yet described God on the inside. They have not yet, they have not yet fully embraced sonship. Who they are as sons of God. They have not embraced it yet. But they expect to see supernatural results on the outside. You have people say this, that, oh, where are the miracles? Where are the signs and wonders? Mm -hmm. And meanwhile,
are the same people. If you tell, if they argue with you about, if you tell them that you are, you are a son of God, you are God, they will argue. Oh no, how can you say that? There's only one God. Look at Romans 8. Let me ask you a question before I go further. The son or daughter of a dog is what? A dog. Okay? Okay. I'm going somewhere. Look at Romans 8. Where are you? Where are we? Romans 8. Look at verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Holy Spirit wants to manifest sonship. He wants to take this sonship from our inside and show it on the outside. Okay? He said, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. So we have this thing locked up in us. That's what it's saying. We're not supposed to be like the world, afraid of things, being limited. Bondage means like you put a dog on a leash, that's bondage. It can't go but so far. We're not limited by fear. That's what it's saying. When difficult things come at us, we're not limited by fear. We can say, Daddy. We are God's children. We can function like our Father. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. What does that heir mean? Heirship means what belongs to the Father belongs to you. What belongs to the Father belongs to you. The reality of sonship says that heaven's resources are available to me right now. Heaven's resources are available to me right now. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16, Matthew 18, 18. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. But when you lose a lot, it's losing heaven. That means that you and I, we have authority because we're sons. I told you, a son speaks on behalf of the father. A son has the father's authority to function. God wants you and I to have our minds renewed to that way. That we are his children, we are his representatives on the earth here. That's what sonship is all about. So being that God's representative on the earth here, I speak for God on the earth. I speak for God on the earth. Whatever I bind on earth, heaven says is bound. Whatever I lose on earth, heaven says is loosed. To bind means to restrict. To lose means to release. So somebody comes around me who is sick, I can bind that sickness. I can say, in Jesus' name, I pray against that infirmity. I bind you right now. In the name of Jesus. Okay? And I lose healing. But here's, here's, here's the dynamic of this thing. Okay? I cannot impose heaven on somebody unless they allow me to. Okay? So while I have all this authority, I have all this sonship rights and authority, okay? I cannot impose heaven on someone. The person has to allow me to. They have to cooperate. They have to agree. Look at Amos. Amos chapter two, I believe that's where it is. I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, force somebody. Amos three, sorry, Amos three, verse three. Amos three, three says, "Can two walk together except they be agreed?" If you have to turn to it, you can, you can write it down. Two cannot walk together unless they be agreed. Two cannot walk together unless they be agreed. That means in order for me to be a blessing to someone, the person has to agree. The person has to agree for that concerning that thing which I'm talking about. The person has to agree. So even though yes, I have all this power as a son of God, I have all this right to bind and to lose and all that, but an individual who I'm dealing with, not in my life now, an individual who I'm dealing with, Okay, he has to agree. 
So I said, well, Pastor, I've been praying about something that's gone in my own life and it seems not to be moving. Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, Mark 11, 23, be thou removed.